This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Theo Von has one of the strangest brains on earth. At times he's completely nonsensical and silly. And the kids used to sit, throw, not snowballs at my head, but ice rocks. Why, you collected them or something? No, I don't, no one collects ice rocks, like. And at other times he's deeply profound and insightful. I maybe could have been a better son to him. You know, and I know the circumstances weren't ideal, but I just maybe could have been a, could have been a better son to him sometimes, you know. However, in the last two or so years, Theo Von has gone from a meteoric rise in success, despite his turbulent life and being completely rejected by Hollywood. Oh, this guy isn't talented, or this guy couldn't be an entertainer. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna take the hardest job to do. I'm gonna take stand up, and I'm gonna do that. Then. Theo Von. One of my favorite comics. Yeah. Once again, uh, you're a hysterically funny comic. He, he actually might be one of the funniest people we've ever met. Theo Von. Theo was born March 19th, 1980, in Covington, Louisiana. Theo's upbringing and his childhood was different. My buddy used to be gay. He was like a homosexual mm. prize fighter. Oh, dude, I remember they had a deaf kid that moved into our town for three days, and this group of kids thought he was doing magic. Because he was always doing all of this and shit, and people thought he was doing magic with no tricks, and they fucking beat him. What, what was that like? Oh, my dad was old, man. My dad was uh, 70 years old when, uh, when I was born. Wow. Um, <laughs> is that right? Thank you for laughing at my daddy. Uh, yeah. As well as growing up in Louisiana, a very rough and rural and poor area, it was a place with very little to do, and so he would find various ways of entertaining himself. You know, I grew up around some fucking real crazy poor white people. They had a dude in our town, no arms, used to fucking fight everybody. He'd get you in that lurch, he would catch you with his between his chin and his chest. One of the kids was in a wheelchair, or just... They never taught him to walk, I think. I don't even think he was crippled, they just never taught him to walk. Now, of course, when writing a video like this, Theo is obviously a comedian, so sometimes he embellishes his stories. But it is safe to say he grew up in a very strange place that definitely shaped his outlook on life as he grew up. I remember I got on a school bus one day and the man didn't even take us to school. He just drove us around <laughs> and, uh, Fuck off. swear to God, and then just drove us back home eventually. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think the reason I do comedy is because I wanted my mom to laugh or something. I was young mm -hmm. and I couldn't get her to laugh. Yeah. And I think there was always like this stress that she was stressed and I couldn't do anything. You know, I was ashamed of my father. And maybe it was just a, a safety mechanism for me to, because I was afraid that if I got to know him, that I knew he was going to die. I just knew how time worked. His life was always a constant battle. He was inundated with fear and always felt like it was just a battle to survive. Theo really looked like he was just going to end up like any other down and out from where he grew up. Despite his upbringing, he managed to get into university. And from his Wikipedia, it seems as though he went to nearly every university. However, it would be a university where he would stumble across a very unexpected career. I was just walking across campus at college and they had like auditions. And then they called me one day and they asked me to to go on this trip, you know? And I was like, oh, this is gonna be really, really interesting. And then... Previously on Road Rules. What in the hell is Theo? That's what I think people think of me when they first talk to me, get to know me, they don't really understand me. The series was pretty straightforward. It took about six different strangers from the age 18 to 24. They shoved them in the back of an RV and they had to travel from location to location. As soon as the show began, it became very clear that Theo was just different to other people. Whenever people meet me for the first time, they laugh at me or something like that. I mean, I, don't, I just don't understand it sometimes. I've always felt that I was different than other people in a way. I mean, we're in a group right now, but right now I'm, I'm totally alone. Can't live life being afraid you're gonna die. Dead man walking. Oh, don't say that. Like Theo, we've seen a thousand times. Yeah, Theo is just out of, and I mean, he's, he's a good kid or whatever. He's he just out doesn't know. And it wasn't just on reality TV where Theo felt like this. He also noticed that even in his hometown in Louisiana, he would kind of get rejected from society over there too because of his success on television. Louisiana people would like try to fight me at bars and guys would like, Jeez. I remember people throwing bottles at me and like it just got crazy. And that's one of the reasons why I left Louisiana was because it got so... Out of jealousy, right? Probably. I guess. They it, get drunk, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the N-word, yeah. they call me the N-word too. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs>
Before we go further with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is the number one platform for building and creating your own super duper beautiful looking website. Websites are so important these days, they are literally your shop front. And you know, if the glass is broken, there's cobwebs, no one's going to enter. You need a good looking website that's professional and easy to use. Squarespace has a ton of different templates. You can pick any one that you like and perfectly customize them to fit exactly what it is you do. Whether you're a PT trying to advertise your services, or maybe you're a designer, or maybe Maybe you want to make a fan page for your cat. Squarespace has got you covered. There's tons of additional features as well, like email marketing, e-commerce, appointment scheduling. Squarespace takes all of the hard work of making a website, makes it super easy, enjoyable, and quick for you to make a great website. So be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. But as good as he was on reality TV, there was a problem. And that was that Theo's career was starting to get pigeonholed. So just for so long, I, that's, you know, I was like that guy. Mm -hmm. So after like five or six years, it kind of became a little ridiculous yeah. sometimes. You know, like he became the reality TV show guy. And this was a problem because as he started to want to do different things in Hollywood, one of those things being stand-up comedy, his agents and managers didn't think he could do it. It's those types of people I would see when I would go into auditions and stuff. Right who had always kind of, I guess, made me feel negative about it. Right. Well Comic-Conner? Has he been to any Comic-Cons when he was still in utero, or is this...? Yes. <laughs> okay, nice. So this is his first one on the outside. It's really interesting seeing the roots of Theo's comedy all the way back in 2006, which was Theo telling these semi-unbelievable stories from his very weird childhood. Like, pop culture obsession. I should have had more time to think about this. Nerd. And despite his manager's doubt over his dreams of being a stand-up comic, Theo managed to win the online competition of this TV show. Celebrities inside of the con. Let's go. I always thought people just didn't like me. Ever since I was young, it just something was wrong with me. I had this ism where I thought people just didn't like me. It just there was nothing I could ever do in a moment to feel any different. However, in the late 2000s, Theo's career in comedy was really starting to pick up and his life on the surface seemed to be doing pretty well. But that is just on the surface. First time I ever tried some cocaine was over here in beautiful Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I think. And I went for a, the longest run I've ever, ever ran. And I liked cocaine because I would get it and do it by myself at home at night. And I would just do it, uh, and it just made me feel good, and I didn't have to be around other people. Next thing you know, I end up with a taxi driver. Four hours later, me and him are doing cocaine together, and, and I'm driving the taxi. And that morning, I was in New York because I had to be on a, a big radio show called the Opie and Jim Norton Radio Show. A Theo Vaughn in Studio 2. So what's up, buddy? Appreciate it, man. Uh, not much, man. I used to actually do steroids when I was younger. And they had like a million listeners, and it was a huge opportunity. And if you'd asked me the night before, hey, man, are you going to stay up all night partying before you go into the radio? I'd have said, no way. I don't, I the same here, man. I had a long night. It was pretty gnarly. What, last night? Yeah, pretty gnarly. Theo's appearance on Opie and Jim Norton is an iconic piece of Theo Von Law. There was no video, but there is this photo of Theo. And I mean, his face says it all. Next day, I was back in Los Angeles. I was telling that same story to someone. And they said, hey, man, I go to these meetings. You know, I go to meetings. And so then I went to uh, some AA meetings. The whole taxi story he really considers a very low point in his life. He often talks about it. And he actually went back on the Opie and Jim Norton show for a second appearance where he talked about it again. Last time he was in, I thought he had a good appearance. But you're writing me <laughs> after the show. And it was bad, man. It was a weird night. Yeah. Yeah. Yahoo movies, I'm Theo Vaughn. But I know someone. But it seemed despite all the craziness in his life, his stand up career was doing really well. Following Last Comic Stand In, he started to tour nationally. In 2009, Theo popularized what is known as crank texting. About six months ago, I get a random text message on my phone from a phone number that I don't know. It says, Hey, it's Wanda. So I write back, What's up, Shawty? On June 1st, 2012, Theo was a featured comedian on Comedy Central's The Half Hour, and he did all the rounds on daytime TV shows, radio shows, etc. But it would be in April of 2011 where everything would change for Theo Vaughn. How long did you live there for? I still live there. Whoa. Yeah, we've passed. I mean, we've kind of. <laughs> 
you know, like I've caught him doing some things. So I think, I think... 2011 was one year after the inception of the Joe Rogan experience. Even Lee in that it's not suppressed. Which at the time was a far shot from where it is now being the largest podcast on earth. And that's because the podcast industry back then was, well, it wasn't an industry. It was just comedians chatting shit to each other on a microphone. I mean, really, it hasn't changed that much. It's just more professional now. Everyone's got a podcast, including your boy. <laughs> I had an abacus as a kid. Of course yeah. you had a I fucking had abacus. abacus as a kid. Why? But what did you do with it? Counted. You counted. Counted. That's yeah. gang. Counted my blessings what was your favorite? to have an abacus. <laughs> Go subscribe to the Afters Podcast YouTube. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. Anyway, and so 2011, Theo Bond decided to start his own podcast called The Comedy Sideshow. Uh, and all my comedy is based on true shit. What happens when you kick it with Theo, man? You do classy shows. At, like any fights with the other cast members are fires. The Comedy Sideshow was pretty short lived, but Theo would return to the world of podcasting in 2015. On a show with Matthew Cole Weiss, that would run for a few years, but the turning point would really be in December 2016. And this is this past weekend, it's the first one I ever done. This past weekend is just, is something special. A show which is led by Theo Bond, sometimes interviewing others, sometimes just talking himself. You know, I'd be at school and the lady give me a little uh, second serving of them uh, mashed potatoes and I'll take my damn shirt off, bro. It was almost like a way that I showed my gratitude to things. This past weekend really showed a different side to Theo. And not only was he just funny and goofy, but also he could be very thoughtful. He could be really introspective and he really had a relatable side to him. I mean, like, he would be incredibly honest and open. He would talk about his personal struggles and anything he was going through in life. All while somehow balancing that with his genius wit and hilarious storytelling. Trick or treat. They thought one person, it was a, um, it was a black person's house, honestly, and they... I guess they had a dude there, his name was Trick or Treat. We're like, Trick or Treat. And they're like, hold on, let me get him. Your average episode of this past weekend is like a film. You know, one second you could be laughing, the next minute you're crying. You might feel inspired, heartwarmed. You'd really just feel a ton of different things. And so Theo Von had found his lane, whether he knew it or not. Hey, Theo. Um, I just don't know what to do anymore. Thank you for calling, man. Um, you can do it, man. If you really want it, you can do it. I believe in you, man. And I and I bet you believe in you, too. But we're strong-willed, bro. When we want to do something, we can do it. And uh, I love you, bro. Gang, man. Thank you, for, thank you for the call. The podcast became more than just entertainment. It became this community where fans would call in and share very deep, very personal stories to get Theo's take on it. They would always ask for Theo's point of view and perspective on something. And it was interesting because Theo was never really holding himself in a high regard. He never tried to come across like he was giving advice or he knew more than anyone else. In fact, the opposite. He would portray himself as being unintelligent and not knowing things. However, I'm going to say Theo definitely under plays his intelligence it, you know it's shipped to black markets and you know countries black markets like what do you mean what do you mean like you, black black you mean markets like, uh yeah i'm not oh you no like i'm not Memphis? saying this no i'm <laughs> no, i see what you're saying it's definitely part of the theo von character and he plays it up a lot because he has this almost like idiot genius characteristic about him. Like he very often will deliberately misunderstand someone or like misinterpret a word they say and relate it to something completely different and just make these hilarious bits. Gentleman and he was, he had on about 90 do-rags and and he didn't do shit, that's the irony. He was One of the things that makes me think that is that there was a podcast once where he was talking about how someone gave him a rhyming dictionary as like a Christmas present. And Theo never really talks about the theoretical side of comedy, he's not wanky like that, but he did mention the reason he liked this gift was because it helped him link words together and different abstract concepts together. Yeah. You see, you love words. Yeah. yeah. How often do you find yourself just reading the good old dictionary? I got a, actually a really cool rhyming dictionary a friend of mine gave me. Oh. He died, but like he gave it to me. Like a, like a dictionary that one rock word will rhyme with the other word yeah it's like every word that'll rhyme like that you know but it was written about maybe 20 years ago so they don't have like a lot of new words in there just like making your brain think like where you could connect stuff mm. you know that you might not know that's interesting yeah I guess. so so does that mean there's a oh but it's in the wrong place yeah what about month smash would work maybe <gasps> bam Phil. what get the fuck out of <laughs> here give us a tough word let's have a little spelling bee oh right. fair all right R e n a i s s a n c e. No. Renaissance. 
R E N N A I S S A N C E. But anyway, with the podcast and from 2016 onwards, Theo Vaughn would get his first stand up special with Netflix. Good to be here, man. I grew up in a small town called Covington, Louisiana, not far from here, okay? Which was called No Offense. He would also feature on the Joe Rogan podcast in 2017, and it was an iconic appearance, and from then he's become a regular guest on the show, and he's really in that close group of comedians such as Burt Kreischer, Bobby Lee. He's really spoken about very highly from these very prestigious comedians. He's had other major podcast success such as The King and the Sting. He's been on Hot Ones, Impulsive, Tiger Belly. He's been on every podcast. And so pre-2020 or so, his career was really big. He was a big name, but he was still relatively underground. But then, 2022 would happen. You know, I'm playing ahead, dude. I need a Vietnamese guy, Marty, right? and a bunch of people because he ain't ready for fucking real two arms. This dude ain't ready. Every He didn't fucking miss a gender. He didn't miss a ethnicity. But a new content model was starting to appear in 2022. It would change Theo Von's career entirely. And that was... Clip. Well, now it's like the clips are re-uploaded for months on months. It gets so many views outside yeah. of the actual podcast. Tate kind of like started that too. Right? Yeah. If you're an influencer, you should go on like a couple dozen podcasts. You should clip all the best parts and just put it in a folder and just give it to your fan. Clips of Theo just started to blow up left, right, and center. On TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. And if you look at the Google search trends, Theo just absolutely skyrocketed from here. Leading to him now having his podcast being one of the most successful podcasts in the world. And he's arguably one of the biggest comedians on earth right now. Maybe I don't fit in with these people that much. I just feel like sometimes maybe they just don't like my personality. They just don't like the way that I am. They went crazy. You were surprised last night. And it made me feel, you know, I just felt like accepted. For me, it's like a really big thing, you know, like. Um... But uh, anyway, damn boy, this shit got me gleeking out my eyeballs, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking making salt water, dude. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and watch this video right here.